In a previous video, I discussed uh, the concept of EAR, effective annual rate, and APR, annual percentage rate. And I want to provide a quick update to that video because it occurred to me that while I showed you how to calculate the effective rate given the annual percentage rate, I did not show you how to calculate the annual percentage rate if you, know, if you knew what the um, effective annual rate was. In addition, I'd like to show you how to do this on the financial calculator, which um, I didn't show you how to do last time. So if you haven't seen the previous video, uh, let me just start from the beginning. There are a couple of different ways that interest rates are stated. First is the annual percentage rate, or APR. Now this is the periodic interest rate multiplied by the number of periods. It's sometimes referred to as the nominal rate, and it's the annual rate that's quoted by law. So if you open up your credit card statement, you'll see what the APR is. Yeah, sometimes if you listen on the radio when you hear about these um, great deals to buy a car, they will, you know, with the really fast-talking person at the end, they will mention what the APR is on the car loan. So, for example, if you have a, a loan that is 1% per month, then the APR is going to be 1% times 12 months, or 12%. Now, the APR does not account for the effects of compounding. That's where the effective annual rate comes in. Perhaps you've been in the bank. Now, interest rates are very low as I'm um, making this video, but you usually see two different, a board in the bank that has two different rates. They give you the APR, and then they give you the effective rate. And the effective rate is the interest rate expressed as if it were compounded once per year. And so this allows for a comparison of rates with different compounding periods. So, for example, if you were comparing a, a certificate of deposit that was compounded monthly, by having the effective annual rate, you would be able to compare it to another certificate of deposit that was compounded daily. So we want to see how we do this calculation. And the calculation or the relationship between these two interest rates is that the EAR, the effective rate, is 1 plus the APR divided by the number of periods and then raised to the number of periods um, of compounding minus 1. So M is the number of compounds per year. So for example, suppose you have a credit card that has um, an APR of 18%, what are you going to do? You're going to take that 18%, divide it by 12, and then add it to 1. So 1 plus, it's going to be 1 plus 0 0.015 because 18% divided by 12 turns out to be 1.5% per month. You're going to raise it to the 12th power, right? This is the number of compounding periods if it's monthly. And you're going to subtract 1 from it, so you're going to get 0.1956, or an interest rate of 19.56%. And let's, you know, and we can check that on the financial calculator if we'd like. And I'm not going to use the financial calculator, I'm just going to do the calculation, then I'll show you the function that allows you to do this. So this is going to be 1.015 raised to the 12th power, and then if we subtract 1 from it, we get 0.1956, which is what I have here, or 19.56%. Now, if you want to find the APR given the EAR, so suppose you know the effective rate, but you want to know what, what annual percentage rate corresponds to that, you can just do some algebra to manipulate this. And while I won't do all of that, you would add 1 to both sides, so you would have 1 plus EAR, and then you'd have to get the M out of here, so you'd have to raise it to the 1 over M power. And anyhow, if you do the manipulation, you get that the APR equals M, which is the number of compounding periods, times what's in these brackets here, which is 1 plus the EAR raised to the 1 over M power minus 1. So let's take a look at an example of that. 
So let's use what we've previously calculated because we know what the APR is if the EAR is 19.56%. So let's just substitute in here. We're going to get 12 times um, 1 plus 0.1956 raised to the 1 12th power minus 1. You're going to get 0.17998 or if you round it off 18%. And let's just check that on the calculator here. So we have 1.1956, and we want to raise what's what we uh, just added 1 to this to the 1 12th power. So I'm going to raise it to the 1 over x power. Uh, open parenthesis, 1 divided by 12. Close the parenthesis, so 1 divided by 12 is 0 0.08333. And then we're going to see what that equals. We're going to subtract 1 from it now, so we're, we finish this, and then we'll multiply it by 12, and we get 0.17998, and if we round it off, we would get 18%. Now, there's an easier way to do this, because the financial calculator, the VA2+, Plus, actually has a function that does this, and the function here is this I convert. So you hit second, I convert, and if you want to clear what's in here, I've already put the numbers in, it's going to be second clear worksheet. NOM is, stands for nominal rate, that's the APR. So if we know what the APR is, let's put it in as 18%. You have to enter, you have to make sure you see that equal sign. And you see C slash Y, that's the number of compounding periods. So if it's monthly, it's 12. If it's semi-annually, it's two. If it's quarterly, it's four. And then we can get down to the effective rate and just hit compute. And we get that same answer we got before, 19.56%. If we want to do it the other way, and I can clear that, here we know what the effective rate is, 19.56. And again, we still have 12 compounding periods. We want to figure out what the nominal rate is. Let's hit compute here, and we get the same answer we got before, 17.998. So if we round off, we get 18%. So that's how you compute, uh, convert from APR to EAR and from EAR to APR. And also, um, if you have a financial calculator, uh, the BA2+, Plus, this is how you do it. I have to admit that I never did it this way, and one of my students showed me how to do it, so um, I wanted to pass that along to people who are, you know, taking finance and need to do the calculations. It turns out to be a little bit nicer to use these financial functions if you can do so.